Hello everyone, this is Sherry, and this is Blue, and you're watching Lessons Learned. Welcome back to the Beginner Pinwheel Series. Today we're going to be basting our quilt. That is, uh, sandwiching together the backing, the batting, and the quilt top itself. This is the first stage here. I have actually taped down my backing with the wrong side up. And what I did is I put three pieces of tape on one end. And then I put three pieces down on the other end. And as I put that second set of uh, tape on that lower end there, uh, I made sure to stretch out any wrinkles. And then I put two pieces on either side to finish getting it completely flat onto the floor. Now you'll notice my batting is pulled back around the edges so that you can see how I taped it down. But on the batting, you want to put the scrim side up, which will be next to the wrong side of your quilt top. And scrim, if you don't already know, is a little bumpiness on the batting that is only on one side. And it helps to grip your quilt top as you're uh, free motion quilting it, long arm quilting it, hand quilting it, uh, whatever. So it's, it's just an aid in uh, keeping things in place while you're quilting. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start some spray basting with some spray glue. Today I'm using this. It's a Dritz spray adhesive. Not my favorite, but I'm trying to use it up. It'll do the job fine. So first I'm going to pull that batting back and give it a spray on half. And then pull the batting over that. And then pull the batting up on the other end, spray, and then place it back down. Once that's done, I'll put my quilt top on and spray it. Uh, on one half, smooth it out, stick it down, and then lift up the other end and do the same thing. And at that point, we'll have our uh, quilt basted, although I will be adding some safety pins. Be right back. Okay, that only took about five minutes. I just folded half down, sprayed, and then walked it forward to lay it back down. And then, I didn't say this before, but make sure your floor is nice and clean and, and dusted so that you don't get any excess dirt or, heaven forbid, mud or anything like that on your quilt backing. Also, put on a fresh pair of socks because you're going to be walking all over your quilt. And actually, that's what I like to do to be able to tack it down securely is walk on it. Instead of making wide sweeps with my hand down on my hands and knees, I just tiptoe around on it multiple times until it's all even and secured. I am going to do one more step to secure this quilt for machine quilting, and that is using these pins that are specifically for hope you can see that they're specifically for uh, quilting basting and maybe up here you can see it they have a little bit more of a curve to them than a regular safety pin would and they're a large size so I'm going to pin a few of these all over this not excessively at least one in each corner one halfway down each side and maybe four in the middle just as a security blanket. Okay, so now we have our quilt basted or sandwiched together ready for machine quilting, hand quilting, or if you want to send it out to a long arm and you want to pay that price, go for it. Okay, so here's some things you can do as a beginning quilter uh, on the machine. First of all, straight lines are your friend. And if you're going to do straight lines, go up one side and then back down the other in that pattern. I suggest starting in the center. That sounds crazy, but start in the center 
do this side up and down up and down you could go between here just with a straight line you could put two straight lines in that section right there you could do straight lines this way afterwards uh, you could stitch in the ditch which is right where those seam lines meet you could do each square around and each uh, each one of these of your pinwheels around that would be simple but on the uh, subject of making long lines this way why you start in the middle is because you want all of your bulk to stay out you don't want to bring your bulk in you want to take your bulk out now with the basting that we did you shouldn't have bulk ideally but it does happen so once you get that side done come back to the middle and do the other side up and down up and down and then the same thing with going side to side go halfway then go back up start in the middle go this way start in the middle and go this way hope that makes sense now how much quilting should you put on it well that depends upon you but there are some rules to it because you don't want your batting bunching up after having uh, washed the quilt several times so you want to have plenty enough uh, stitching to hold it down and usually on your uh, batting it will tell you uh, the distance you should have between stitches and I'm looking on mine right now and it says stitch distance let me pull this out so I can show you see that brown square all the way to the right stitch distance up to 10 inches apart 8 inches is a pretty good rule as well 10 inches hmm, that's a that's a little wide in my opinion uh, it's not going to look very quilty, um, but if you, you want to do less quilting, you just don't like the, the puffiness of the quilting, then do 10 inches or somewhere or thereabouts, but not less, not more than 10 inches apart on your lines. Okay, so pay attention to that. Um, I haven't really decided what I'm going to do, but I'm going to decide here pretty soon. Um, I'm thinking about doing at least one line through the pinwheels up up and down and side to side and that would be about I guess five inches right somewhere thereabouts be about a five inch stretch between one side to the other and then this way as well and what I'll wind up with is um, I'll wind up with an X through here and I'll wind up with a square in the middle so that might be interesting you could also go through your your sashing that you did if you did sashing you could just go right right through those now this is a 10 inch square so you're still gonna have to put at least one line through those squares but you could do that you could also do something side to side and just follow your points let's for example you start at this point here and you just head up to this point to that point to that point and on across and then do the same thing the other way that would be interesting so these are not hard you can do these on your regular sewing machine if you have a walking foot on your sewing machine that's ideal because uh, the walking foot uh, has a little bit of uh, feed dog capability from the top which keeps your quilt in line uh, keeps your top from sliding and uh, getting you know wrinkles and creases in it which are not your friend when you're quilting so I'm going to go ahead and get started on mine and you'll see what I did when I get done.
So here we are at the machine getting ready to do the machine quilting. And I've decided to go diagonally on mine. Um, so I'm just going to go through the pinwheels diagonally here. And uh, I do have that one inch border in here. So that's going to skew my exact uh, diagonal by a half an inch. So by the time I go through this one straight and all the way across to the next block, it's going to be off a half an inch. But then it corrects itself once it goes through. So it does make a consistent square pattern all over the back of the quilt. So um, not ideal, but I kind of wanted to have that crisscross look. So I'm just going to go with it. But if you want to go up and down straight through your pinwheels instead of on an angle, you won't have that problem. If you call it a problem, it's not really a problem, it's just a, a choice. And I'll show you right here what, what I mean by that. I've already got one line sewn through there. So if I go straight through, it's going to be off a half an inch. However, on the back side, you're going to have perfectly square, 8 inch, 8 inch squares of quilting on the back. So here you see that you're going to get the other half inch or so, because this isn't marked. I'm just going free handed at it. It's going to go half inch on the other side. Now when you get to this one, it's going to go right through the middle. And it's going to basically correct itself. But that's not important. I, I just want the crisscross design. And if it's not super symmetrical, that's okay. As long as my quilting is symmetrical on the back. On the front, you can't really that half inch variance going from side to side. It doesn't bother me. I have a number 14 needle on here, a quilting needle. I have a sulky thread, variegated blue and white. And I have my stitch length on four. So you just kind of have to fold your quilt up in such a way that it goes through the throat. My machine happens to have a nice deep uh, throat area to push the quilt through without much manhandling. Which is why I got this machine. Now you can see I'm coming across another one of my quilting uh, stitches through there. So I'm going to try to keep that perpendicular and also try to deal with my bulk here. You can take a stiletto and kind of hold that back. But don't get this under your needle. And that'll make a nice, neat, flat quilt there. Okay, and that was actually my last one. And I did not have to change my needle, I mean my bobbin thread, but it is pretty low. out that I haven't taken out yet as I was quilting along I had to take some of the pins out to get, get them get them out of my way but then here you can see my my quilting on the back side 
So I have the square that it makes is about nine inches. So I'm within my batting requirements, which were 10. I could go through and make another stitching all the way through. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to leave it at that and show you how to do the binding. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut off this excess right up to the quilt top. Don't cut into your quilt top, but just cut it off even. The backing and the batting, that's excess. So I'm gonna go do that now, and I'll be right back with the batting or the uh, binding part of the quilt that I wanna show you. Okay, so here I am with my trimmed edges all around all four edges. There it is. So what I'm going to do now is attach my binding. So I'm going to I did a binding of two and a quarter inches this time. So I've cut strips of my backing two and a quarter inches. I attached them by means of a diagonal seam and I have five pieces of 60 so that should get around the quilt and have extra so I'm gonna leave um, about six inches and I'm gonna start on one edge here and sew a quarter inch seam allowance. And there's a little bit extra batting there on that spot. So I'm gonna trim that down. Funny, I decided to start right where that was. Okay. All right, let's do a, a good long amount here, at least six inches. Don't start sewing until you leave that much. Okay, let's go. I'm just following my quarter inch right here on my sewing machine uh, plate. Actually, it's the bobbin cover, but I can see where it says one fourth inch. If you have a seam guide, a, um, what do you call it? A magnetic seam guide or something that could go there, that'd be great. Unfortunately, the walking foot doesn't provide any help with measuring that. So, here we go. I'm going to backstitch a little bit. And I'm going to sew all the way around to the first corner. I probably should change my stitch length too about two, two, two. Take your time on this. Get it nice and even. Okay, now that we're approaching the corner, I want to make sure and stop sewing and backstitch a quarter inch from the edge of the quilt. So I have a pin here. I can pretty much tell what a quarter of an inch is by sight. If you don't know or don't trust yourself, then measure it. So there's a there's my edge of my quilt. Whoops, I'm not really showing you in my hold on it up here where you can see it. There's the edge of my quilt. There's a quarter inch from here to that pin. So I don't want to sew beyond that pin. I want to stop and backstitch a couple of stitches. stitch and needle up 
pull it off, cut your threads. Now, we're going to head down the other direction. And what we're going to do is make this match up to the edge of the quilt so that we could start sewing again. But we want this to be perfectly perpendicular with the edge of where we just sewed. So we're not going to sew here across, we're going to leave that. But see this is folded and then over and then this is flush here. So we're going to start sewing again at that quarter inch. And I like to make sure the needle is down in the fabric, even though I need to probably back stitch over the back edge. And then I can, and then I can take off forward. So we're going to do that uh, corner method all the way around. And uh, when I get to the end, I'll show you how to join up the, the raw ends. So now we're getting down to where we're getting uh, closer to our joined sections. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and measure from where I started my binding, my tail here, that I left five, six inches on. And I'm going to measure a good um, 12 inches up from that. Maybe 10. Yeah, 12 inches. 12 inches. I'll put a pin there. So I'm heading I'm heading this way with my binding from the corner. I'm up at the corner and I'm getting ready to go down towards that pin. So when I get to that pin, I'm gonna stop sewing. Let me go ahead and arrange my corner here so I can get restarted again. Okay, there we go. Another tip is um, if you feel better about pins, pinning this, you can go around and pin the whole thing first or clip it. Okay, I'm getting close to my pen, and it doesn't have to be exact, but I'm going to back stitch. Alright, pull that pin out, pull your threads and clip, and then this whole section here that I have open. I want to join this end with this end. So what I'm going to do is lay that as flat as I can get it. And I'm just going to take my scissors and run this. Let, just let yourself see about where a half inch would be here. Okay, because we're going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance through these open them up and sew that so you want to be able to see where about a half an inch is and that's about right there 
Got my eye on it. And I'm going to cut it. And I had about uh, four feet of binding left. So now I can take my two pieces, open them up, put right sides together. Don't twist them. Put right sides together. And we're going to sew those together on the machine here as best we can with this walking foot. <laughs> it's not ideal, but I don't want to take it off yet. Okay. There we go. You certainly could pin this if you want to. I'm just going to line it up pretty good here. Back stitch. Let's see, uh, we did a half an inch because it took up a quarter of an inch on one side and a quarter of an inch on the other side. So that should make us come out about perfect. And it does. It's going to lay just right. Now you can... Um, Iron this open. It's not a good practice to have one of your joints this close. But it's not going to affect anything, really. So we're just going to go with it. So I just finger press that open. And I'm just going to go right on down through here and finish my quarter inch seam line, attaching my binding to the quilt. these threads right here so they don't get tangled in my stitching. Stitch. And we're done attaching the binding. Now we have to finish the binding, which means we will turn it over. First of all, we're going to take this to the iron. We're going to iron this out flat from here. Then you're going to take it around loosely, maybe leave about three eighths. And then that should catch when you go through here to sew it right in that ditch, which is what the binding foot is going to guide us to do it should always attach because that's the same area that is the same area right there that the stitching is going to hit so we're going to have a good 16th to an eighth of an inch hopefully all the way around so i'm going to have to roll up some bobbin thread so i'm going to be back in just a second okay so you can see here that my uh, binding foot is going to be exactly the size of my binding that I've turned over to the other side so I'm gonna change that out now take my walking foot off binding foot on so I have to put back on my little um, 
upper piece that holds the foot on because it's one of these quick release, quick attach, quick release um, feet. So this little dude goes right here. All right, so now we can just lay this here. Put our, press our foot down to grab it. And there we go. So, we can start anywhere on this. Uh, I did take some wonder clips, especially on the corners to hold that down for me while I'm sewing. Got those ever so often. And that'll help guide me a little bit too. So I'm just gonna go about right here and drop my foot down on the edge. So this this edge is flush with my my outer piece of my binding. Okay, so our binding is complete and you can see my because of the white part of the variegated thread shows up on this dark you can see that that's where that's where my stitching line ended up and it turned out nicely on the back it caught all the the edge there all the way around so let me show you what the whole finished quilt looks like now Okay, so here's our quilt all quilted and bound. You can see the quilting on the back that I did, crisscrossy. See it on the front? Kind of makes a little um, diamond shape on the square here. And then a little bit better look at our binding. Let me give you a whole shot of it here. Hopefully you can see that pretty much. It's a fun quilt. It's got a little weight to it. It's cozy. It's ready to be used. So I hope you made this quilt. Uh, a couple little Hints about making it a little bit simpler if you want, even especially since this is a beginner pattern, is just to do don't do the sashing. Just put your blocks together and then just do straight line quilting like I uh, explained earlier. So that would make it super simple. And you saw how the binding went on simple, and no hand sewing, all on the machine. There you have it. Nice little 48 by 60 quilt, I think it was. All right, so if you're anxious to 
get yours done. Uh, start working on it. Go back and look at episodes one and two and three. I think this is four. I'm not for sure. <laughs> uh, and, and get going on it. It's just a really easy quilt. If you haven't sewn in a while and you want to do something simple, this would be the one. So there we go. All right. Thanks for watching this series and I will see you on the next series. Thanks for watching Lessons Learned and come back and see me through the week for Finish It Friday and also Monday Morning Quilt Chat. All right. Have a great one. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.